we're going to be revising the Upland Limestone topic of the National 5 Geography course, with a particular focus on limestone landscape features and associated Ordnance Survey map skills. This is part of the Physical Environments Unit, which will be tested in Section 1 of the question paper. A few key points. This is a paired topic with rivers and valleys, and you will have been taught both of these in class. You should therefore avoid question one on the exam paper, which will be about two other landscape types, and go straight to question two. Part of question two is likely to be linked to an Ordnance Survey map or a diagram, and will test your ability to identify limestone landscape features from them. This is likely to be part A of the question, worth up to four marks. Part B of the question will ask you to explain a particular limestone landscape feature for another four marks. So let's have a look at our learning outcomes for this video. I've grouped our learning outcomes around the two parts of the question. For part A, you will need to be able to identify the following features on an Ordnance Survey map, that is, limestone pavements, potholes and swallow holes, caverns, stalactites and stalagmites, and intermittent drainage. You'll also need to be able to describe the main limestone features from an Ordnance Survey map, identifying them by their contour patterns, and giving accurate six-figure grid references to locate them on the map. For part B, you will need to be able to identify limestone features from a photograph or a diagram, as well as an Ordnance Survey map, and to be able to explain the formation of those same limestone landscape features that I just mentioned in part A, as well as possibly to draw and annotate a diagram to explain the processes by which they form. So let's have a look at what some past exam questions have looked like for the Upland Limestone topic. There are two different possibilities for part A. One is that the question will ask you to match six-figure grid references to limestone landscape features, as you can see in this example. This means that you will need to go to each six-figure grid reference in turn and check to see if any of the landscape features are there. You'll notice that there are three landscape features, but four six-figure grid references. This means that one of the grid references will be for a location on the map that does not include any of the landscape features. Let's have a look then at what some of these landscape features actually look like on Ordnance Survey maps. Limestone pavements can be identified by these rocky outcrops, normally associated with slightly flatter parts on the side of a mountain or hill. Potholes or swallow holes can normally be identified simply by the name pothole. Sometimes you'll find variations like water sinks. Caverns, again, can be identified by the name caves or the name of a particular cave if it's famous, as in this case in the Brecon Beacons. Stalactites and stalagmites don't really show up on Ordnance Survey maps because they are underground features and so cannot be seen on surface maps. Intermittent drainage can be identified by looking along the length of the river and spotting that for part of its length, it appears as though it stops and starts again. You might be forgiven for thinking that this is actually two separate rivers, one flowing northwards up the map and the other flowing southwards down the map. But this is actually one river that for part of its section disappears underground and then reappears on the surface some distance later. The other possibility for part A is that the question will ask you to match labels on a diagram to a list of limestone landscape features, as can be seen on this example. This means that you will need to find each of the labels in turn and check to see if any of the limestone landscape features is present at that point. You'll notice that there are three labels, A, B and C, but six landscape features listed on the bottom of the question here. That means that three of these landscape features are not labelled, even though, in most cases, they are actually present on the diagram. For part B, you will notice that all of the questions include the words you may use a diagram or diagrams in your answer. Bear in mind that even a well-drawn sequence of diagrams 
will probably still only be worth one mark. Most of your marks will come from annotating the diagram in order to explain what is actually happening. So let's now take some time to revise the formation of these limestone landscape features. The key thing to understand with all of these limestone landscape features is that they are formed from Carboniferous limestone, which was formed somewhere in the region of 350 to 400 million years ago at the bottom of a warm, shallow tropical sea. The Carboniferous limestone was then uplifted as a result of movements in the Earth's crust to where it forms ranges of hills, as we can see around Britain today. During the last ice age, this limestone was exposed on the surface as all of the plants and soil that had formed on top of it was scraped away by the ice and by the meltwater at the end of the ice age. The limestone contains joints and bedding planes, which are natural cracks that formed as the land was lifted up above sea level and dried out, and also as the land started to expand very, very slightly upwards as the weight of all of the ice sheets melted and receded. These joints and bedding planes are lines of natural weakness, which can be dissolved by chemical weathering as carbon dioxide, dissolved in rainwater, reacts with the calcium carbonate in the limestone. This causes the joints that are exposed at the surface to gradually become wider, forming this pattern of blocks of stone, called clints, separated by widened joints, called grikes. This whole pattern of clints and grikes is what we call a limestone pavement. Sometimes the joints and bedding planes dissolve sufficiently wide that streams flowing over the surface of limestone can disappear and flow underground. The point where the stream disappears can sometimes be identified as a small hollow or depression on the surface, below which it expands into a much wider, deeper crack in the Earth's surface, as can be seen in this diagram here. These small hollows or depressions are referred to as swallow holes. If, however, the deep, wide vertical crack extends all the way up to the surface, then they are referred to as potholes. As streams and rivers disappear into swallow holes or potholes and continue to flow underground, they will dissolve joints and bedding planes as they flow. Where there are lots of joints and bedding planes very close together, these form areas of particular weakness in the limestone which can expand outwards and form caverns. Water dripping from the roof of a cavern can sometimes leave behind deposits of dissolved limestone, which is called dripstone. Over time, this can build up into long spikes extending downwards from the roof of a cavern, which are called stalactites. Sometimes the water containing the dripstone falls onto the cavern floor and then the water evaporates leaving behind the dripstone deposits, which can build up into spikes extending upwards from the bottom of the cave, which we call stalagmites. These stalagmites only grow at a rate of a few millimetres per year because the water contains relatively small amounts of dripstone and because the air temperature in the caves is so low that evaporation happens at a very, very low rate. Finally, as streams and rivers flow down through limestone, eventually they will reach the water table, which is usually found on top of a layer of impermeable rock. The river will then flow along the top of this layer of impermeable rock until it resurfaces at the bottom of a hill as a spring or resurgence. However, sometimes after periods of heavy rain, the water table rises because the water cannot soak down into the impermeable rock. As a result, underground streams reach the surface higher up and then flow down the hill into the river because the ground below it is waterlogged. These streams are called intermittent streams and the area is said to have intermittent drainage because the streams do not always flow in this way.